Hey everyone, this is Coach Mo, your kick-ass career coach with one of my awesome, awesome clients, Miliana DeMori. How are you, Miliana? Hi Mo, hello everybody. I am awesome. I'm happy, fantastic, and so happy to be with you today. Yeah, thank you very much. So folks, this is part of my beautiful uh, opportunity to talk with my clients, interview them, kind of dig deep and really get a sense of what does personal transformational change look like and feel like? What's the experience of it? Taking maybe some of the fear out of it and also exposing folks to real life stories. When Miliana and I met over two years ago now, I believe it was Miliana, um, I'll let you tell the story, but you were not as strong on the inside as you had been on the outside. And um, we came across each other through my work at Hay House. And um, two years ago, kind of paint the picture, what was going on in your life. And by the way, let me just say, let me introduce you just a little bit. Uh, Miliana comes to us uh, through, obviously technology allows us to connect all around the world. She is in Split, Croatia. I had the pleasure of visiting her recently in her uh, hometown. You're the product of a war. And uh, maybe you'll get into talking a little bit about how that affected you. And, um, and just tell us a little bit about you and, and let's, let's get going into what was, what was looking like uh, two years ago. Absolutely. So two years ago, I was a competitive athlete and living in split Croatia. I lived in Australia for eight years, in Germany for six years during the ex-Yugoslav war. And, you know, like I said, like I was... I was the strongest woman in Croatia two years in a row. So I was a champion in three different sports, kickboxing, Olympic weightlifting and powerlifting in Croatia and also in Western Australia with Olympic weightlifting. And I had the external strength and I was able to, like I'm finding out a lot of people, I was able to put the mask of confidence and strength up, but it took a lot of effort to keep it up, meaning that there was still so much internal work to be done just to feel absolute certainty in who I am, in my value, in uh, being confident, in, in sharing my value, in, in sharing my voice and in, in sharing my story. Yes. Um, I had uh, maybe like, a, like many women and especially many women from maybe my culture is playing it down was very expected. If you would be playing up, you know, that's how it is. You would, you would be considered arrogant and not yes. liked and rejected. And so it was yes. safer to play a smaller role yes. to be accepted. So basically uh, a spinal injury stopped me from being a competitive athlete. And that was of course, very painful physically, but also emotionally spiritual because my identity was built on being an athlete and I always loved self-development spirituality but it was more like you know low-key would not advertise it i've done courses for life coaching for humanistic neurolinguistic psychology for mediumship etc cetera, etc cetera. but there was not uh, as i was quote unquote socially acceptable so i was just hiding behind what's acceptable that's like my university degree my sporting results and so that catapult catapulted me to really look look into the inside and I still remember the clarity call you and I had and just the in instant connection. You know, when you feel someone, someone hears you and someone sees you. And there were many coaches throughout my life and there's few that are connected like I did with you, just a pure authenticity. And I love people that have results. So I've learned never to listen to people's advice. I look what they live. Yes. Yes. And if their actions meet their words, if, if they are selling a story or if they're telling me, giving me advice, I love looking at, are you able to live that advice in your own life? Like, are you successful? Are you healthy? Are you happy to have your relationship? And right. so for me personally, I was waiting for long times to be a, a coach mm -hmm. because for me personally, building my authenticity was more important than getting out there and coaching people. So I, I really wanted to be authentic, authentic and strong in my health, in my emotional strength, in my life results, in my finances, in my career, in my relationship. So the major areas for me were so important to be authentic that 
something inside of me did not allow me to comfortably coach people. And now I know that this was necessary for me to stand in my power. So um, let me just highlight a few things that you said, because I know you super well since we've worked with each other for over two years, but people who are just meeting you, uh, I'd like to highlight a few things. So the first thing is you became a humanistic neurolinguistic practitioner, an NLP practitioner for personal reasons. Yes, I had a lot of war trauma and um, domestic abuse in my family and eating disorder. So I, I was having an eating, eating disorder when I started into the self-development, uh, depression, suicidal thoughts. And so I was starting to study it basically, um, some people call it the dark night of the soul. I was at the bottom. Like I just did not, I did not know anybody that was into positive thinking. Life was miserable. Um, and it, it was all a mindset. Really, it was all my mindset. So I started looking for ways to, to get out of the darkness. You were a child of a, of a war. So you had, you had childhood yeah. trauma. You were a refugee. Yeah, yeah our house was bombed twice. Yeah. Um, yeah. Some of the memories, I, you know, when, when trauma happens, um, a natural thing of the subconscious mind is you forget about it. It's such a strong suppression. So you forget about the intense, you know, you remember bits and pieces, but it's quite chopped. And yeah. so a lot of those things were suppressed, but you live with, uh, so my central nervous system was constantly, uh, you know, highly wired, which means my hands would constantly sweat when I was around people. I was constantly on guard. I was afraid someone would attack me, not knowing why. Yeah. And I realized that there was a side effect of a trauma not, you know, not being ready to be looked at and not being yeah. healed. Yeah, right. And, yeah. and there, there were some other issues that developed uh, as, as maladaptive coping mechanisms, uh, the eating disorder. Mm -hmm. um, I know just in working with you, 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 you married a beautiful man, but you had some maladaptive uh, emotional baggage on how you were treating your relationship or him. And, and, and I know when you came, when we started working together, um, you had a phrase for um, how you were in the world. Do you remember what that phrase was? Jeez, what was it? <laughs> <laughs> so I, you named, remember you, you named uh, a, an initiative you did with your cousin. Remember that? Am I, am I tapping Make into happy life? Well, what? before the, the one before that, the bitch. The jealous bitch. The jealous bitch. <laughs> okay, that was, the, last, the last two years, I, I was researching how not to be a jealous bitch. Yeah, exactly. So because of my upbringing and because, um, again, the marriage of my parents was very dysfunctional and domestic abuse and uh, father cheated on my mother and physically really badly abused her. Um, I had the model of the world and the story and the belief that you cannot trust men. And as a woman, you're not safe, uh, which was, you know, factually what happened to my mother. You'd ever have, you'd have every reason to believe that. And then here I have a husband that is everything but my father. Yep. And so what I did was a bit of projection. Mm -hmm. I would be afraid that something like that happened. So I would be suspicious and would get jealous if, if uh, other women would approach him and speak with him. And he's a, he's a top athlete. So, you know, he's in the media and, you know, handsome, charismatic uh, man. And so not based on any facts, only based on my childhood story, I would uh, be triggered and I would react in a way that, you know, I would get angry on my, at myself. I'll get like pissed off. Like, what the heck, you know, I'm, I'm strong and confident in these areas of my life and what's with here. And then I learned is like just the expectation of perfectionism and that it is okay that in one area of your life, you are thriving. And then another area, awesome. There's some room for improvement, room for, room for healing. Right. And that was very painful to admit that I had weaknesses. Yes. Because I was this like tough bitch, you know. <laughs> tough and strong. So I was you're really strong. strong. Yeah, yeah. People might be listening to this uh, conversation, Miliana, and saying, all right, Mo, aren't you a career coach? What's going on here? But the, 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 the thing that wasn't working for you anymore is that you couldn't be in the gym and pursue your career. You basically lost your job due, yes. to, a, due to a physical problem. 
And so your body broke down, giving you this warning, hey, pay attention, there's something still that needs your attention. And so we started working together because you wanted to have a career as a coach, perhaps a personal trainer to help other athletes. You weren't sure exactly where to go with this thing. And you didn't feel like you had the validity and the credibility to actually be that, even though you have behind you, you have some certifications and some training that are legitimately uh, giving you the authority to help people um, with certain things that you helped yourself with, with eating disorder, as an example, traumatic syndrome and things like that. Um, but you weren't ready to be that in the world. Not at that moment, because I realized that, that one thing, I was still triggered by stuff. And I was like, well, how can I be a role model for other people if I'm still triggered in some areas of my life? So that was just going into like pure honesty and through the painful process of, you know, moving away the ego to decide, all right, let's, let's, let's look at it. Let's, uh, let's ask for guidance and uh, let's, let's research what's possible here. And I did the action steps. I did the, what, what needed to be done. So as, as you as you recall, um, we, when we when we start getting to work, the first thing I help my clients go through is their own personal mission statement, core values, mm -hmm. life purpose, mm -hmm. and natural gifts and talents. And at that point, then you start to bring up all of these wonderful aspects of who you are. Now you can't really hide from your awesomeness. But as soon as that bright light starts shining, all of a sudden you see some cobwebs. And now you're a little stronger. So dealing with the things that you knew were kind of haunting you become kind of forefront. And I know you started really diving into some things that were really holding you back. Um, then the second thing we did together was we dove into the second piece of my workshop, which is defining your future. And you started getting to that. Yeah, I want to coach. I want to train. I want to help my husband be uh, a better athlete and, and help with his promotion and that sort of thing. And you started having aspirations and dreams that were close things that you can now see that you could do yeah yeah they seem too big and too far away you know quite yes. overwhelming um because i personally i love doing a lot of things and i was talking about i want to do this one day i want to do this one day and yes i had my coaching and i finished a lot of certifications but it's not, it was time to finally start using it and I, I know so many people who have hundreds of seminars under the belt and they're still not using it <laughs> and then so I you, were remember, afraid, you were afraid to be that person and oh you know i had an aha moment so i went to a masseuse a fantastic physiotherapist and he was a stall he was telling us a story what he could have been oh you know i could have gone and traveled with this world-class tennis player traveled america but then you know i thought well, i might as well just finish this extra course and for me that was like a slap in my face i'm like oh I never want to be a person that it could have been. You know, it's so, such a different story to oh, I could have done yeah. this, I could have been that, and then yeah. a different story is I've done this. Yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm doing it. That is so different. Oh, I got to write that one down. That's, that's, that's precious. Um, and, and when we started doing our work together, uh, one of the things that you know that I push my clients to do is to actually do an elevator pitch and speak their future self in a, in a self commercial. Yeah. And I remember, cause I, I, I do remember some of the journey of almost all of my clients, but I kind of remember this was like, you want me to do what? And video myself. And you went yeah. for it. You yeah. I've had a lot of, a lot of, a lot of your clients too, right? Yes. So uh, talk about what it felt like to really step into your power and vocalize open energy center of the throat and really vocalize your power and your truth and what you really wanted to do. Talk about what yeah. that meant for you. So for me, that was a, a place of moving into clarity from vagueness into clarity. And that was in claiming that, yes, I have finished all the schooling. Yes, I have incredible results with my clients. Stop playing small. And so the elevator pitch was like, all right, hi, my name is Miliana. I am a top performance coach teaching athletes to have the best results in high stress situations, students, executives, overcome traumas. So they have the best performance and the best life when it matters. And my real life result is I, when I use the 
principles that I've learned on my, with myself, on myself, every sporting competition, I had a national record. Because <laughs> you knew how to control your mind. I know how to mentally prepare. I know how to program my central nervous system. I know how to turn nervousness into positive adrenaline. I know how to visualize. Yes. And so it's like, actually, I, I know my stuff. And now, you know, with your, with your course, I was almost like given permission to just claim it. Like, yeah, I know, I know this works. I've got real life results and I have it with my clients. And it's like, stop playing small, stop minimizing. It's, oh, yeah, I am just, you know, just a few national records, nothing big. You know, I broke a record, was there for 12 years, and then I broke it. Ah, you know, <laughs> anyone could have done that. Yeah, anyone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. <laughs> Claiming your greatness sometimes is one of the most um, difficult things for us to do. Mm. Look at who I am. Look at how powerful. Look at the fact that. I can control who I am. And now it's like, okay, well, I did that in the, in the weightlifting and in the kickboxing. I don't know about the rest of my life, but you got to work on exactly what was important to you. And that included your marriage. And that included how you, how you showed up to be a partner in your marriage. And, and I know, and in, in having now met your husband and, and he sent me a, a delightful email when you uh, finished the workshop. And uh, of course he, he loves you more and more every, every single day, of course. But he said something very, very impactful um, to me, and I know also to you, that you used to be the woman with all the ideas and all the ambition, but no action. Yeah, and I was, he, was a little, he was a little frustrated with that because he was like, all right, great, you're talking about all this, but let, let's get it done. Mm -hmm. And the time that we've worked together, you have gotten so much done, and I know he is so proud of you, not because you've gotten it done per se, but you've become the woman who is totally aligned with your words and deeds and desires. Absolutely. So his words now like are, Miliana, you have a PhD in getting shit done. <laughs> and yeah. I do. I do. Right. I, I, right. I, that was, I was realizing that, you know, maybe a lot of us have it, but it, a, lot, a lot of fear was behind it and a lot of perfectionism and fear of failure, fear of success, fear of, oh, this is going to be too hard and how long is it going to take? And, you know, just a, a lot of fear not based on facts. Yes, yes. And so gradually you started accomplishing, accomplishing, mm -hmm. accomplishing. I know that the first time that you set out to uh, achieve your, your action plan, which is as you wrap up my workshop, as you know, uh, there's an eight by eight action plan. And it's a, a very specific way I help uh, my clients create very uh, robust goals that might seem overwhelming, but we break it down so that it's totally achievable. And I believe if I remember the first time you did that 12 month plan, you achieved everything in six months. Yeah. And you're like, now what do I do, Mo? I'm like, do another one. <laughs> yeah, and was, uh, you've done that a couple of times. Yeah. yeah. So, so um, what does it feel like to actually achieve the to-do list and the, not just tasks, but to, to get stuff done that actually elevates your career, elevates your income, elevates your lifestyle, elevates who you are in the world, elevates your marriage. Because I know that's one thing that you're very proud of, is having a, a better marriage with your husband. Um, talk about how that feels to actually have moved yourself from broken down and hurt and fearful and the jealous bitch to who you are today. Talk about how that feels, because that's, that's a magnificent um, growth and, and evolution that you've made as a person. Yeah. How's that feel? Yeah, it feels amazing. It feels just a sense of pride and a different attitude of willing to do the work mm -hmm. and willing to show up. And uh, basically the more I showed up honestly and vulnerable with more vulnerability, the better my results were. Mm -hmm. And if I didn't show up, Oh, no results. Wonder why. <laughs> and so ha having, you know, you in my corner and, you know, you have a gift of seeing brilliance in people and you don't see, you know, people, your clients fears. And it's like, yeah, of course. And so everything that I wanted to do was, 
you know, having a, a tourist apartment, which is now a passive income for me. Yeah. And yes, it took work. Yes, it was annoying, but I, I attacked it or approached it with a different attitude. I approached it with an attitude. What can we do? What can I do? Who can I ask for help? Who's a professional here? So I was changing my perspective of, oh, this is too hard, too overwhelming. I got to do it all by myself into, all right, let's hire professionals. Let's get some guidance here. Let's get it done. And so, and setting myself deadlines and, you know, running a yoga retreat um, and then um, running my own workshops later, running Olympic weightlifting workshops in different cities. Yeah. And just what else did I do? So much, so much. Yeah. And, and then the one thing that was on your list was to be a published author. That was, yeah, that was on my list. My, my dream was to become a published author. And it was, I was afraid to share that because like, you know, who am I to become a published author? Are you? Well, do you ever hear that from your clients? <laughs> Who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented, and awesome? And that's exactly. the Marianne Williamson quote that we're so familiar with because we, we read it and use it all the time to remind ourselves, who are you not to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented, and awesome? How dare you rob the world of how awesome you are? Ha, huh, exactly. So you started telling your story, getting it out there, and now there's multiple people who understand your story and then someone knock, knock, knock. Hey, would you participate in this book we're putting together? Is this right? So that was, again, being in an attitude, uh, being, you know, sticking with the people that are so powerful in my life and are being part of your mastermind and constantly having someone with me in my life, you know, because of the internet, you don't need to have nice people in your city, wherever you live or in your village. It's, there's no excuse anymore. There's the, the, the internet gives you the possibility to really find amazing people. And yeah. so I said yes to opportunities and I said yes to investing in myself. And I said, yes, yeah, I'd love to be part of this group, which is a association of transformational leaders in Europe. And these are transformational coaches, leaders, published authors, best-selling published authors, authors that were uh, Oprah, Mind Valley, et cetera, et cetera. And so I was invited to be part of it, which was like, wow, this is so awesome. And then, because I said yes to myself, uh -huh. a side effect of that is they decided to write a book with Europe's transformers. And I am now a transformational leader in Europe. I will be interviewed on UK, UK radio TV. The book will be published soon with other amazing authors and positive people and life changers. So great. So we my dream is coming true. Yes, dreams do come true. And they come true uh, through some work. And, and Miliana, you know this work um, almost as well as anyone I've ever worked with because you are trained in some of the skills that I help my ladies uh, learn for life. And so you got really clear on who you are at a deep level. You began turning up the volume of your soul and getting that power, that internal power that you can't get any other way but by bringing it forward from within. And then you got super clear on who you are and what you bring to the world. And you got focused and you spoke your truth and you began to develop a plan. And you put that plan in writing and then you began to execute on it. And then you continue to commit to who you are and how you wanted to be in the world. And now, you know, like I said at the beginning, we've known each other for about two and a half years. Your, your, your coaching business is taking off. You're, you're coaching uh, women with eating disorders and, and trauma patterns. You are speaking. Let's just call it around the world because I invited you to come and help me with my, uh, my retreat and workshop um, in Miami. Uh, we've become personal friends because I've come to visit you in, in Croatia and you've visited me after the retreat. Uh, we know each other's uh, partners. Um, you're featured now in my workshop in uh, some of the modules I have in my online workshop. Uh, we do your work together so that I can teach my clients some of the very specifics of neuro-linguistic programming and how we can really wire our brain for success and, and the fact that it's doable. We are no longer slaves to our conditioning and our programming we can control it and alter it. And you have a great skill set and a great expertise and a warm heart about how uh, to teach people how to do that. And the fact that you just used your story and leveraged your story to create more power in the world is just an awesome thing. 
the sun just went down, so I lost a little bit of, <laughs> a bit of brightness in my room here. It's like, hey, wait a minute, where's my light? Sun, come on back. <laughs> so here we are, two and a half years later, your life is on fire. You're going to be uh, sharing your gifts on even a larger stage, sharing it in, in this book that you're, that you're a beautiful part of and really, really owning your power and your truth over the last two years, let's call it. The life journey gets better, doesn't it, as it gets better? It does get better. And you, you still have to do the work. You still get cranky. But now you have the skills how to get out of it. You have a plan. You have a clarity. And you know that action is what will bring you out of it and, and into your dreams. And really is, it is, is, is deciding to be, to be present and to be there for yourself every single day. That's why I love how you teach your clients to do the, the, the daily practice. It's like a daily emotional, spiritual career hygiene. It's like, yeah, exactly. brush your teeth, drink water, journal, right. meditate. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Get connected to the higher parts of, of ourselves on a, on a regular basis. It, you know, it's, as you know, it's, a, it's, it is a daily practice. Mm. Um, just like brushing our teeth, just like eating. Like we don't eat all the food we need in, in a, you know, in a week and then we don't have to eat for the rest of our lives. We have to continually keep replacing calories, just like we have to continue to replace and feed ourselves from the inside out. Uh, that woman you were two and a half years ago when we first met on that clarity call, uh, she knows some things that she didn't know back then. What would you say to that woman who's going to be on a clarity call tomorrow or the next day? What would you say to her? Well, funny, it's uh, the quote that just came up the other day for me was the difference between a hero and a coward huh? is there is no difference between what the hero and the coward feel. The only difference is what they do. The hero does what needs to be done. The coward lets the fear keep them in the same place that were. It's the doing that distinguishes the hero. And that's also something that uh, Mike Tyson's trainer told him, Customato. And if you study sports psychology and performance, like Mike Tyson was the best in the world for a reason. He was mentally prepared. He, his coach believed that he's gonna be the world champion and because the coach believed that he could, He's like, well, if my coach believes that I could, maybe I could, can too. And so his results were the, the, his results were just a side effect of his beliefs. Yes. Yes. And so for me, if if I would tell myself a guide, and it's you know, deciding for myself, it's like it it's worth investing in myself, in my knowledge, in my development. Um, I always, I always will say that the best coach, the best coaches in the world have a coach. The best athletes in the world that have Olympic gold medals have a coach. Right. And it is just someone that can see your brilliance without your worries, your fears, your you know cranky moods. <laughs> and it's it's easier. We we move so much faster forward when we have someone that supports us. Yeah, we can do it alone, but it's not fun and it's hard. And we might get lost along the way. You, you know, from working with me, I've had a coach for now 18 years, not the same one. I've had a variety of different coaches who have served mm -hmm. me uh, as I've uh, evolved. I, I now have um, actually two coaches and then I belong to a, a mastermind of other coaches that we all help lift each other up and be better at our craft. I wouldn't be anywhere I am if I hadn't made that conscious decision 18 years ago that in order for me to be who I wanted to be and to feel how I wanted to feel and to have that outward success that I wanted to have that I knew was possible for me, but I, I, I didn't know how to do it. And I was getting frustrated and lost in my own emotional state. Um, I got the guidance I needed. And, and as you know, like the 12 week workshop I have, I, I put women through what, what takes many people 20 years or more, or even sometimes they're never able to do, but in 12 weeks we can, we can, I can help a woman achieve what she's never done before and that what might take at, at least five, 10 years to do. Um, and, and so when we put the best personal development, spiritual development and practical, applicable skills and techniques, 
we can then create the life that you so lovely uh, have demonstrated for yourself that is possible. And, and I'm, I'm always delighted and happy to meet with you and to talk about what's next for you. Um, you're part of my, uh, my, my mastermind group, so I get to keep up on what's happening for you. What do you have next and what would you like to, to just celebrate that's um, a part of your life right now? What's, what's really turning you on right now? So I just, I mean, just this year, I have fulfilled so many dreams. So I was, I had honor to co-facilitate the retreat with you in Miami. I've run my own workshops in a five-star hotel here in Split, two, two of them. And it was, you know, full and successful and people left with a smile and transformation on the face. I will become a published author. I have traveled the world. I've said yes to myself. I've demonstrated bravery. My, my relationship with my husband is better and better. We, we honor love and support each other more. So just getting better and better and deeper. My health is better. My, my inner certainty and strength is better. I'm serving. I have, you know, waiting lists for clients. My, I'm serving people and I, and I love what I do and I'm paid for it. Yes. <laughs> so good. So good. It's it's so fun for me, Miliana, as you know, to to see who you are today, to celebrate with you, and and to know that I humbly was able to create that bridge for you, um, and and so many women like you, and you were in the workshop with some really wonderful ladies as well, some of which we keep in touch with together. Um, it's it's a delight to see you, to see you smile, to know your happy life, um, and I. I love the fact that we have intersected and we uh, continue to kind of add to each other's journey. It's, it's really, really, really brilliant. Um, ladies, uh, I'm talking to Miliana here and you might be thinking, yeah, that's possible for her, but it's not for me. And I'm going to tell you this, this transformation is possible and available for everyone who says yes to themselves. And with Miliana's story, I want you to know that hardly anyone has a story to compare to who she was as a young girl and what, she, what was thrown at her that she couldn't handle as a young person. And that then turned into some very dysfunctional living as a, as a teenager in her early 20s. So you're seeing a beautiful, self-evolved, aligned, powerful person right now. This is because she committed to her own health, happiness, alignment and power and and she and i have seen each other through some some dark nights of the soul she has committed to being a person that is the fullest highest version of herself and without that commitment she'd be broken dysfunctional perhaps even divorced i don't know I mean, we don't know what would or could have. everyone else it would be everyone else's fault not mine yes right if i stayed in that role yeah yeah right so you're looking at a woman committed to her own personal growth and, and journey, and the better it gets, the better it gets. Miliana, thank you so much for sharing your story. I can't wait to help you uh, promote uh, your, your beautiful book and, and really uh, continue to see you shine in all your beautiful brilliance and the gifts that you have to share with the world. So thank you so much for coming on this show tonight, uh, today. And um, I just keep looking forward to your constant expansion. Thank you so much. I want to say thank you, Mo, for being my most amazing coach I've ever been and an angel in my life. And I'm grateful for, you know, to the bottom, to the bottom of my heart for everything that you have guided me through. So thank you, Mo. You're welcome. All right. Miliana, talk to you soon. And folks, this is Coach Mo Fall. You can find me at mofall.com. And you too can up your life just like Miliana did. Talk to you soon.